Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins, thank you so much for joining me. Now, I wanna touch on something that I keep hearing. A lady just actually wrote me and she was like, Tony, you know, you answered this question about divorce. Uh, it was a lady, she asked me in the Instagram story, Q&A that I do, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you join me there. I do a Q&A about every day, um, unless I'm on vacation or something or, you know, on tour or something. But she asked me, she said, Tony, you know, should I continue to pray for my marriage? My husband has filed for divorce and he says he's not in love with me. He doesn't want me. Should I continue to pray for my marriage and try to make it work or should I let it go? And I told her, let it go. You can't want somebody that doesn't want you. Now, understand this. I believe in prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. But a lot of times what's happening is we're praying for our will, not God's will. And we say, Tony, but God hates divorce. God does hate divorce. But if your marriage was not a union of God, then God is not going to hate you doing away with something that he never put together. See, a lot of things we put together that had nothing to do with God. And then we say, I got to stay in this because God hates me to leave this. But God said, I, I never ordained what you did. I never was a part of that marriage. So you do need to part ways and let it go. And see, here's the thing. We say, well, Tony, well, what does that say that in the scripture? Well, for one, anytime you're considering divorce, it nine out, of nine out of 10 times has to do with unfaithfulness. And the Bible clearly states that you cannot get a divorce, that you should not get a divorce unless it be for unfaithfulness. It does not say unless it be for abuse, but see, this is where you have to serve God in spirit and in truth and not just in the letter. Because in those days, women could be beat on. In those days, a man could beat his wife. You know, he, a, a woman had no voice. A woman could not speak. You could not speak in public. You could not speak in church. You could not be a pastor. You could not be a president. You could not be a CEO. You could not do anything. You could not vote. A woman had no rights. So the reason why I said you can't get a divorce except to be for unfaithfulness, you know, infidelity, cheating, adultery is because everything else was allowed. But now we are under new laws and the Bible tells you to obey the laws of the land. So abuse, um, especially domestic violence, that's a crime. But also we have different forms of abuse, which is emotional abuse, financial abuse, social abuse, verbal abuse, and then you have physical abuse. And some of those th other types of abuse could be worse than physical abuse. You may say, man, look, I'd rather you slap me or punch me any day than, than call me fat, ugly, worthless, disgusting, you know, no good, useless, you know, all these different names every single day. I'd rather just, you know, I'd rather you slap me than just beat me down verbally every day, all day, because, you know, this, this thing on my cheek is going to get, go away. But the words that you said to me can live with me forever. So a lot of times in some cases, we, we would rather be physically abused than verbally abused. Abuse is abuse. But then at some times it may be other things. And this is why you have to serve God in spirit and in truth, not just in the letter, because you could become a prisoner to the letter. You could become a prisoner to your comprehension. So, yes, the church is against divorce, but God is just not the church. And and in a lot of churches today, God is not in. Yes, even Christian churches, a lot of churches today, God is not in there. It is a man that's running a business. But God has no place in his business. God is not in there. And, 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 and if Jesus was here in a lot of churches today, tables will be flipped over because it's become a marketplace. It's become big business. It's become booming business for scam artists who are who were insecure, who were bullied. Now to become rich and, and, and then now you got pastors competing with the rappers. Who can have the nicest car? Who can have the nicest watch? Who can have the nicest shoes? Who can spend the most money competing with rappers and athletes, but making money off the back of religion? So in a lot of churches today, God is not in there. So don't come to me and tell me what your pastor said, what your church said. You got to go to God because if, if you're, if you getting a divorce for your safety or your sanity, is a sin, then guess what? Just like God will forgive every other sin, 
he'll forgive that sin too. So if it is a sin, and because a lot of things we won't know until you meet God. So I'm here to tell you that don't remain a prisoner in your relationship, being a prisoner to your interpretation of the word. You got to know God for your heart, because what if you could not read the word? How would you interpret it? That's when it has to be spiritual. And that's where we got to use common sense. And we got to understand that God is a spirit, that this is a spiritual connection. This is not a physical connection. This is not a literal, you know, a, a literature connection. This is not a classroom. God is not a teacher, is not a professor who's giving you this book that you got to read and take a test on, a physical test based on your comprehension. And this is why a lot of people are slaves today because you slaves to your lack of interpretation or you slaves to someone else's interpretation of an ancient text that bewilders us all. No one human being, including the theologians with doctorate degrees will be able to completely and fully understand the Holy Bible or any ancient text for that matter, because it all is subject to your interpretation. So if in your spirit you feel you need to get a divorce, and then if in your spirit you feel that you may have sinned against God and offended God, but then if in your spirit you repent and say, Lord, please forgive me if I have sinned, for I know not what I've done, but I know that that marriage was killing me. And I know that you are a just and mighty and holy God. And I know that it is not your will that I die at the hands of this man or this woman in the name of marriage. Because I know you are the author of love, not the author of confusion. And I know that you said that love is the greatest gift given to mankind. So love should not kill me because love killed your son meaning he died out of love for me so that I would not have to die. Hate killed him, hate crucified him, but he did it in love for me. So he already died and paid the price. So why do I have to die a second death due to the name of a union of marriage? Marriage should set you free. Marriage should make you whole. Marriage should make you happy. Marriage should not kill you spiritually, emotionally, or physically. So if your marriage is killing you, I'm here to tell you, God already knows. And if that is a sin, which I highly doubt that it is, you are already forgiven. The debt has already been paid when Jesus died on the cross. So don't let religion enslave you to torment in a marriage. Don't let someone's interpretation or them trying to hold the law over your head enslave you and drive you to an early grave. Divorce is a sin. If you get in a divorce without reason, I'm, I'm going to tell you when divorce is a sin. Divorce is a sin when you say, uh, ooh, I'm, I'm bored. Mm, I, I just want something new. I just want me a different, you know, man. I, I, want, I want a man with some abs. I want a man who makes a million dollars a year. I want a man, you know, who is tall, dark, and handsome. Not this sh short, heavy set, bald head guy I'm with. That's when divorce is a sin. Divorce is a sin when you say, you know what? Uh, my wife and had my kids and put on some weight. You know, we're not having sex as much as I'd like. Mm, I think I want a divorce. Yeah, I'm, I'm just falling out of love. I just falling out of love. That's when divorce is a sin. When you just get in divorce just because you're bored. 
just because you're tired, just because you want something new, just because you want something different, just because you quote unquote don't love this person anymore. That's when divorce is a sin. But when, when, when the marriage is, is, is killing you emotionally, spiritually, or physically, or all of the above, that's not a sin. Because God is not the author of confusion. And he wants that you have the desires of your heart. He wants that you are healthy, wealthy, protected. He wants that you are blessed going and coming. He wants that you are clothed and fed, that you are fed spiritually, emotionally, physically. He wants you to be blessed and blessed more abundantly. To have those desires of your heart. He wants you to have it on earth and in heaven, not to suffer at the hands of a human being in the name of marriage. So I don't care. And I'm a devout Christian. I serve God with my whole heart. But don't come throwing me a scripture and boxing God in to your interpretation of that scripture and saying that just because the extent of your interpretation of this scripture, then it has to be a sin against God because my God is bigger than that. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And I know that being a spiritual being that he knows my heart, he knows my spirit. So if I have to leave a marriage for my sanity and my safety, my health and well-being, then I know God is not against that. I know God is not against that because he's a spirit that's greater than, the, than just those letters that you're confining them to. And that's why the Bible says serve God in spirit and in truth. It does not say in letter and in interpretation. It says in spirit and in truth. So understand that everybody who dealing with a lack of self-love, you're dealing with low self-esteem and this marriage is draining you and killing you because of infidelity or any form of abuse. And you know you need to leave, but you are stuck because of what some of what your church is telling you or because of your limited interpretation of the Holy Bible. Don't do it to yourself. Don't die early death. Trying to be a slave to interpretation or a slave to the, to the written law that you don't even fully understand. So you stand in a, a broken, dead, abusive, toxic marriage because you don't want to sin but you committing every other sin. You committing the sin of, of coveting. You committing the sin of lying. You committing uh, the, the sin of gluttony. You committing the sin of greed, of idolatry. All the stuff you buying and worshiping, the house you want, the car you want, all them things that you've made your God. You committing every other kind of sin but then you want to stay in a toxic, dead, broken, abusive marriage because you don't want to sin against God. Come on now. Let's get it together. Hey, this is Tony Gaskin. God bless you. I hope this makes sense to you. I know it's not for everybody, but I know it's for somebody. And somebody got to say it. So, hey, God bless you. We'll talk soon.